So you've definitely got a fix on that now, yeah? Okay, and we're not, we're not too far? Okay, good. Oh, hello everyone. Uh, sorry, no time to chat today. You see, we've picked up a distress call from a nearby spacecraft, so we're just moving in now to investigate. In fact, I think we may now be close enough to make contact. We are? Yep. Okay, well, let's give it a try. This is Eagle 13 calling Vessel in Distress. Please identify yourself. Unidentified Vessel, this is Eagle 13. Do you read me? Hello. Uh, can we help you at all? I'm not sure. Do you need medical attention? I don't think so. Well, would it help if we got a little closer? Uh, oh, yes. That would have been perfect. Okay, stand by. Um, yeah, get us a bit closer, Marina, and I'll prepare the boarding tube. That would have been necessary. <laughs> Do you maybe want to try that again? Uh, oh, yes. Hold on. You are my prisoners. Right. And um, I am youngster. Of course. And I will release you if you will agree to my demands. Which are? Um, I want to push the button, please. You what? Don't you remember? You came to Mars a while ago looking for someone to push the button on the randomizer. Yes, I do remember that. I really, really wanted to do it. Mother has forbidden me to press any more big red buttons, you see, after, well, what happened last time. Only that horrid little it star beat me to it. But, young star, that was pod 97. That was months ago. I know. I've been following you ever since. And we have actually been back to Mars since then. Well... I did get a bit lost a few times. I see. Then I ran out of fuel. Oh, God. And food. So basically you've... Been drifting in space for about three months, actually. <laughs> well, there, there, young star. It's all right. We'll look after you. <laughs> and yes, yes, of course, you're more than welcome to make today's randomizer selection. Oh, goody. This button here, isn't it? Uh, no, 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 that's the self-destruct button. Oh. Uh, I'm the only one who gets to touch that. No, no, here's the randomizer, and there's the button. So off you go. Make it a good one. Now oh. oh, that's it. Well done. Hooray! And obviously, we'll gladly give you a lift home too. Oh, thank you. I expect Mummy will be wondering where I've got to. Oh, she's noticed you're missing. Uh -oh. mm, she just doesn't care. Oh, I'm used to that. Did I do it right? Well, see for yourself. The printout's right there if you'd like to tell us what we're watching today. Uh, uh, yeah, this side, young star. Oh. This side. Yes. That's... So, today's episode is from... Uh, Terror Hawks. Oh, I know that show. And the episode is called Midnight Blue. Oh, ho, ho. I don't think I remember that one. Am I in it? Oh, no, you are in it. In fact, at the very end, you are instrumental oh. in thwarting your mother's latest evil plan. Oh, 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 no. Not one of those episodes. Um, oh, can I have another go? Ah, no, sorry. I'm afraid it is one go per person, and we do have to watch whatever gets picked. Oh, well... <laughs> Does it come with snacks? Oh, I don't think we, uh... Oh, Marina, that, uh, that bucket of carbon deposits you scraped off our engine baffles this morning. Do you still have it? Oh, thank you, Marina. Oh, it's still warm. Yes. In fact, young star, if you're going to be sticking around for a while, maybe you'd like to sit in on this one, you know, uh, talk about your memories of making this episode. <coughs> or, or, or maybe not. Well then, here's uh, Midnight Blue. Pardon you.
So while Youngstar gets on with his bucket of carbon goo, we'll get on and watch this week's episode on the randomizer, Midnight Blue, which is an episode that uh, I find is, is one of those episodes, I think in every show, every Anderson series, you have an episode where you just you keep forgetting that this one even exists. And in fact, uh, many years ago, some of you may have seen the... Uh, oh, we are opening with, with Youngstar eating a bucket of, of goo. Uh, that's bringing us full circle. I think Pluto's hungry. Oh, Pluto. He is hungry. I really liked this um, this uh, running subplot with Pluto. Well, not, it wasn't really a subplot. It was a... a My grammar crunchy. A sub-sub-subplot of uh, Sistar's little pet cube, Pluto. For two reasons. Partly because I, I think it hints at... Um, this this uh, maternal instinct that would later be fulfilled in uh, Can't hear anything. in the second series, but also it's nice to give the cubes who are a, a very minor part of the show a, a bit more focus. Well, of course I can. I'm also pretty sure it's Windsor Davies doing the voice, but uh, I don't think that's ever been confirmed. Anyway, there's a Zeef diving for Zelda's complex. It's going to crash. It comes straight in and... What happened, young star? I don't know. Where's the kaboom? It is a zeef, but where is it? Much closer than you imagine. Stand clear so it may land. Oh, Zelda's got to... Uh, even for Zelda, that's some uh, serious bed hair on her this morning. And be amazed! as we open the doors to the Martian atmosphere. Oh yeah, and a miniature Zeef is uh, entering the room. And here we get an absolutely adorable shot of young Star's feet oh, plodding up to the Zeef, which uh, doesn't even come up to his, his knees. I can see no reason to miniaturize a Zeef. You. And this, um, this kind of brings up a question that uh, is a, a sort of running, running, nagging question in my mind throughout Terror Hawks. <laughs> in episodes like this, who is piloting the Zeefs? Sorry, Zelda. I don't think it can be Cubes, so that means that it's got to be someone like. Perfect in every detail. Sram or Lord Tempo sat in there miniaturized with. Comes planet there. With nothing to do. It, it, the Zeefs need a pilot. And panic the So I've, I've never quite understood who, who pilots them. It will. Terrorise the dinner hogs! Precisely. Wonderful! Oh. And there goes the wig. Why does that always happen? And I suppose this is the, uh, another throwback to, uh, the Super Marionation era of Anderson shows of, uh, the shrinking episode. And although, um, none of the, uh, Terror Hawks characters actually find themselves shrunk, what? Although I think they did in, in one of the annuals. I think Hero did. Greenfly, the common aphis. Again, you can see that thinking of, oh, we've got this model that when placed next to the puppets looks quite small. Maybe we can do something with that. So I, w I wonder if, um, I don't know, Tony Barwick visited the studio and then got the idea for the uh, this story from that. Anyway, here comes the Zeef. We have a contact. It's a Zeef. Lock onto target. Ready to fire. Fire! Well, the charge is detonated, but... We missed. How the blazes did he miss it? It's a Zeef, Dr. Knight. Oh, that's, a, that's a, an odd um, angle on Battlehawk there. Usually we zoom in from, from Battlehawk's right-hand side. There we were on the left. I'm wondering if that was just a flock shot. This is a 1050. Because I've seen pictures of the, uh, the model stage and... Um, in none of those pictures have I seen the left-hand side of the set being open for the camera. It's always been the right. Anyway, enough of Battle Hawk. Hawkwing's off to uh, investigate this uh, Zeef that's gone missing. We've got the intruder on positive track. And going back to something that I uh, I mentioned at the beginning uh, about sure do. the forgettable nature of uh, certain mid-season Anderson episodes. 
um, through no fault of their own, largely. It's just... Uh, Altitude 1... It's just if there's an episode like this with nothing really to distinguish itself, you can... Operational limit. and You can forget about them every so often. And in fact, when I was putting together my... Um, you may have seen it on, on YouTube, my YouTube channel. Uh, every single Anderson episode ever made a montage. It runs for about 15 minutes. The first edit I made of this, I missed off two episodes and one of those was Midnight Blue uh, and the other one was uh, Captain Scarlet Treble Cross Kate, break up pursuit the tiger, we're so close which is also one I, I, I tend to forget about anyway I think I see it I'm Kate and Hawkeye are going very very high no, I'm giving you an order but if they go much higher yeah, I hear you they're going to go into space, so it's time to call off. Oh, listen to the wind. I feel a restless kind of motion. And I believe this is the first appearance in the series of uh, Kate's signature hit. Uh, just an episode or two before it would actually uh, would have a whole story revolving around it. SOS or SOS, Mr. Tracy. This is a slightly earlier demo version of it, which doesn't quite have the same kick as the uh, the later single release. I hate the shot of Hawkwing swooping over the White House, by the way. Yeah, this doesn't have the same beef as the, the later later version that appears in Play it Against SRAM. Anyway, Tiger's here to completely kill the mood. Don't stop on my account. I enjoy fun too. Uh, I guess I'll uh, hit the sack. No. Hawkeye's wearing a shirt made out of a picnic blanket. Take it easy, Kate. Tiger? But even he knows not to stick around because uh, there's a little bit of uh, unsaid business needs to be dealt with between Kate and Tiger. We need to talk. All right. We could have nailed that Zeef if you hadn't pulled us back. If you'd taken Hawkwing any higher, you could have gone into Earth orbit. You could have been marooned out there. Our job is to defend the Earth. Don't tell me what our job is. All right, I'm sorry. What happened to the Zeef? We tracked it down. It landed. New York. But the Pentagon insists no alien craft flew into their airspace. So what happened? Unless our whole tracking system has gone haywire, somehow it did land in New York. I like this establishing shot of New York, this sort of generic city that uh, I think again appears in Play It Again SRAM. But I also like that scene because as we covered reasonably recently on The Randomizer with, with Close Call, here's Bernie the Drunk staggering out of a bar in New York, um, one of my sort of bugbears about the early episodes of Terror Hawks was the, the the sort of serious nature of it didn't really gel with the cartoony look of the puppets. There's that sort of, oh, Mark Darrell is a security risk. Oh, he's, he's you know, there's more than security, blah, 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 blah. And these puppets can't, can't quite handle those serious... Rise once more. Th those more serious ideas. In, in Captain Scarlet it would work fine because the puppet, the puppets uh, Confound. just look correct to have those kinds of conversations, but not in Terror Hawks. Please, sister. So that scene between Tiger and Kate was uh, bordering on again being something similar, a bit too serious, but I think they just about got away with it. I think there's enough silliness in the series by this point that a very occasional moment like that works much, much more successfully. <laughs> and it's also vitally important to uh, to set up the second half of the story. This is Zero. Oh, I love this. Commander of the Terror Hawks, send in the cover. <laughs> like to award me another medal for bravery, Your Majesty. You're far too kind. Perhaps <laughs> Corporal Einstein should get some token of recognition. Oh dear. Zero? Oh! What are you playing at? Well, I, I, I was only... Again, I, as I've said hundreds of times before, uh, not just on the randomizer, I adore Windsor Davies as Zero, and I, I especially love... He must have a patchy blood the way you do creep about. One or two moments like that where Zero thinks nobody is watching him and he's making a little speech... A computer... ...about his own bravery or whatever. Zero, you don't even know that two and two make five. Of course I do, sir. Definitely. 
you just proved my point. But so! Don't argue, Zero. We leave for Spacehawk immediately. So we need a Zeroid of mathematical excellence. Zero clearly doesn't qualify. Also, we're taking uh, Diz Wheat and Five Five along. Um, just, to, just to be safe, we've uh, got a choice of two there. And 5-5 five five is pretty quick at arithmetic. And his wheat has a moustache, so it all balances out. Your visit is an unexpected pleasure, Dr. Einstein. Thanks, hero. I brought a Xeroid computer expert with me. I'm pretty quick at arithmetic. Oh! Oh, sorry, I thought that was a different episode. Target profile, range, and tracking systems. In fact, I'm not sure it isn't. I think he says that in, in To Catch a Tiger as well. That was the episode I was thinking of. When it becomes fact, I'll tell you about it. So, Five Five is the mathematics expert, and uh, Dee's Wheat is just here because he's... on the parade ground. Because he's Zero's BFF, I suppose. Hey, you're a bit of a bright spark, Dick Hewitt. What's two and two? Vingt-deux, of course. <laughs> Vingt-deux. Two and two is twenty-two. You airy fit. You're as thick as an oversized ball bearing. And one of the benefits of a Terrorhawks episode with, uh, to be fair, not a whole lot going on, at least not so far, is um, if you need is moments of padding, the Zeroids are... What day is it? Are, ...are just brilliant creations to go for for that. Just throw two of them or three of them together and let them have a, a conversation. That's all you really need. Anyway, oh, Bernie the Drunk has seen the uh, Zeef model taking off. Still miniaturized in a pile of bins outside the bar. What will they think of next? Never had toys like that when I was a kid. <laughs> oh. Tiger? What is it, Mary? It's that Zeef. I've launched Hawkwing. <laughs> this time we don't miss. The Zeef's heading for space, Doctor. Yeah, but Hawkwing's closing fast. Was this the entirety of Zelda's plan, just to lure Hawkwing into space? But why don't we see it? It seems, it just seems to me like the idea of a miniaturized Zeef, if she really wanted to cause some damage. Wait a minute. She could do so much more than she's doing at the moment, which is basically nothing. What if it's, say, ten times smaller? That's why it could land in New York and not be spotted. It's ten, maybe a hundred times smaller. Kate, that Zeef's been miniaturized. You'll need to get real close to make visual contact. Ten, ten. And considering that miniaturization thing was a part of Zelda's it's dangerously near to uh, arsenal of powers right from the very first episode, it is surprising that they abandoned pursuit. Very rarely. What do you say, partner? Made use of it. I think this. Sitter, let's go get the critter. And there's a mention of it in a later episode. Finish the job. That's about it. Have visual contact. Take it out, Hawkeye. Aye aye. Oh, and they got it. But also it got them a bit of debris flying around. Which has damaged the engines. Which again doesn't make much sense. You would think if it was smaller, Hawkwing would be at uh, less less Enter space. risk of damage from it, but uh, into orbit. I don't know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna second guess any of Zelda's plans here. Ah my plan has worked. It's worked. Her, her, one of her weakest plans has actually uh, succeeded for once. Zelda? Something that even a gurgling idiot like Young Star could shoot down. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Okay. They've got a limited air supply and a hull that might break up any second. Zero, get some of your men out there, fast. So. Sure. This is a lovely image, though, of, of Hawkwing just drifting around the Earth in orbit, as well as... Uh, Hawkeye, try the cannon. Kate, the image of Kate and Hawkeye just completely helpless in the cabin. It's some very nice Richard Harvey incidental music for this one. It's Jane. Which, sadly, as far as I know, is, is one of the scores that doesn't survive. Do is sit tight. Here come the Xeroids. Five of them. Kate, Hawkeye, 
Don't transmit any further. Conserve your oxygen. Help is on it. Fed up with you. I don't want to hear any more from you. Tiger. Hawkwing, out. Oh, this is familiar. That's the hull. From uh, certain Stingray episodes where Stingray went... Uh, they don't have a chance. ...too far beneath the... Uh, We're almost there, sir. Right. Attach yourself... The surface of the water, I think. Um, the pr it was the pressure. Yeah, that was it. Pressure of extreme depths in episodes like The Big Gun. Stingray's hull would start creaking. Another Zeef. Flaming thunderbolts. Oh no. If only we had more than one fighter craft. <laughs> can you hear me, mother? And here he is. Youngstar, it's your big moment. I can you half? No? Okay. You have a defenseless, powerless target. I doubt if even you can miss. <laughs> Why won't miss, mother? Oh dear. Rely on me. Why am I deeply concerned whenever he says that? That's one of my favourite exchanges in the whole series. I, I love it when Young Star's got something that is so Take it out. Tens it. So within his capabilities and yet he gets he gets undone. Through no fault of his own. In, in this case, it's the uh, Zeroids are no match for a Zeef. The Zeroids who are coming up to meet him. Listen carefully. Getting some lovely music here. I, I really wish this score could be found. I got it, lads. Form a battle line. So we've got a, a five Zeroids making a sort of cross shape with zero in the middle. We've Wait for my command, lads. If the Zeef opens fire, they'll be blown to pieces. What's that? Navigation lights. Oh no, it's the Zeroids. Ready? No! no! Oh, poor young star. It's an enormous star cruiser! What is the cretin talking about? Star Cruiser was never made into a series. It was only in the pages of Lookin! Oh. That's it, Young Star's given up. Open fire! So who have we got here on Zero's team? We've got, obviously, Zero. 2-2, two, two, don't know him. Dee's Wheat, of course we know him. 5-5. Five, five. Oh, um, that, that, that leaves us a fifth one we need to, uh, to account for. Do we get to see who that is? Incompetent, slobbering idiot! Oh. It's not his fault. And that's it, Young Star spinning off into space. Zero. Considering Hero said the Zeroids were no match for a Zeef, they've done quite well there. Bring her in. Oh, that's it, Zero and his men have attached themselves to Hawkwing. Gonna bring her back. Well, I guess they're, they're bringing her back into uh, the White House. It was all a question of size. I don't know how the, the Zeroids stand up to um, we to the heat of re-entry, but there we go. Four got the range wrong. You was right, sir. We about size. What are you talking about, Zero? Size, sir. And here we go, another another really nice uh, Zero is stupid ending uh, from Windsor Davies here. An intelligent and... Good at arithmetic. Uh, what's two and two? Two and two. Um, twenty-two. Uh, no. That's what uh, Dick Hewitt said. Um, now you've embarrassed me. <laughs> Let's see now, two and two and here and in. It's a trick question. We cannot all be Albert Einstein. Oh, I sometimes think that the uh, the last pages in the a Terrorhawk script is just like two or three pages marked with words. Windsor Davies does something funny, and uh, they didn't e it didn't need to tell him anymore. He could just fill in the gaps. Anyway, that was Midnight Blue, which. Um, it is one of the more forgettable episodes of the show, I find. It's there's an it's a nice image, certainly, of, of hawk wings stuck in space and orbiting the Earth. And uh, as I said a few times, the, the musical score there for that one is really nice. But other than that, it's like... It's a really nice idea to miniaturize the Zeef. You know, who knows the, the kind of chaos that, uh, that Zelda could cause with that. And it's like, well, she sends it to New York and then she calls it back. Yeah, the plan was just to get Hawkwing all along, which is is fine in itself. I just feel like the the idea of the shrunken Zeef uh, maybe could have been saved for a, a slightly better story than this one. So, um, with with thanks to Youngstar there for for making the selection for us, but uh, 
not one of my favorite episodes of Terror Hawks. Let's see how he's doing. It could be a while. 